Um, tonight's topic is called Nepis and Bibles. Nepis and Bibles. Okay, let's open up with the book of Luke. Give me the book of Luke. Luke chapter 7, verse 31. Luke 7, verse 31. Read that for me. Yes, sir. The book of Luke, chapter 7, verse 61. Not 31, 31. Luke 7, verse 31. Luke, chapter 7, verse 31. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, Whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation? And to what are they like? Come on. They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace and calling one to another and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not did and ye have not danced. We have mourned to you, and ye have not wept. So now this is Christ speaking to the scribes and Pharisees. He speaks not just the scribes and Pharisees, but the men of that generation of the time that he walked in. So he's speaking directly to the men of that generation. Guess what? Well, hold this. Give me the book of Isaiah 22. Isaiah chapter 22, verse 14. The men of that generation is the men of this generation. Isaiah 22, verse 14. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 22, verse 14. Read. And they shall hang, and they shall hang no. upon him all the glory. No, no. Isaiah 22, verse 14. Come on. Isaiah chapter 22, verse 14. And it was revealed in mine ears by the Lord of hosts. Surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till you die, saith the Lord Read. God of hosts. You see what he's saying is that surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till ye die. So Isaiah is talking about what? Isaiah is prophesying about the generation of, these, of the last days. He says, he says, this iniquity shall not be purged from you till ye die. So he's talking about what? This is regeneration. That the spirits, they come back every fourth or fourth, fourth, third or fourth generation, the spirits come back. So the same spirit that Christ was addressing back then is the same spirits that are back this day. So go back to where he was at. Luke 7 verse 32 again. Start of verse 31. Read verse 31 again. Luke 7 31. Luke chapter 7 verse 31. And the Lord said, we unto, we unto then shall I liken the men of this generation, and to what are they like? The men of this generation. The men of this generation is the men of that generation that Isaiah was talking about. Go ahead. They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace. They are like unto, they are like unto children sitting in the marketplace. He says, the men of this generation, they are like unto children sitting in a marketplace so now you really have to imagine the characteristics of a child you understand it says they are like unto children sitting in the marketplace meaning what they are idle okay come on they are like unto children sitting in the marketplace and they, calling one to another and saying they are calling please. now the children hold on these men because they are what they are children you understand? These men, they are children. They are child, they, their mind is the mind of a child. It says they are like unto children sitting in the marketplace calling one to another. Meaning what? They calling one to another to influence one another. You understand? Come on. And saying, we have piped unto you and ye have not danced. That's we what have born to you. Hold on. Wait. The scribes and Pharisees, you understand? Those that don't, didn't believe on Christ, and those that follow the scribes and Pharisees, this, they were saying to Christ, we have piped unto you and ye have not danced. You understand meaning what? They are not dancing. The, Christ wasn't dancing to their tune because they were not about progress. They were about confusion. Go ahead. We have piped unto you and ye have not danced. Really? We have mourned to you and ye have not wept. You see that thing? We have mourned to you and ye have not wept. Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 10. Because that's what this is what Christ is explaining here. Proverbs 1, verse 10. Watch this. Proverbs 1, verse 10. My son, if sinners entice thee, 
consent or not. You see that thing? So these that were what? They said, these that were saying, we have piped unto you and ye have not danced. We have mourned to you and ye have not wept. That's the sinners. It says, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Because why? They, what? Their mindset is not the mindset of what? The mindset of progress about the bigger picture, the nation of Israel. No, the mindset is the mindset of a child. The child is only concerned with their toy. That's the mindset of a child. That's the man of this generation. Read again. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 10. My son, if sin is entice thee, consent thou not. Consent thou not. Come on. Verse 11. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us look privily for the innocent without cause. You see that thing? So this is how they pipe unto you. That's why verse 10 says, if sinners entice thee. So he's telling you that the, the, the mannerism, the character of these boys, these children that are going to pipe unto you. You see that thing, my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Verse 11 is when they pipe unto you. You understand? Jump down to verse 15. This is the point. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. You see that thing? Refrain. My son, walk, hold on. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Meaning what? Don't follow after their evils. When they pipe unto you, don't dance to their tune. That's what he's saying. Because the men of this generation, that's how they think. Okay? Children, they are childlike. Their mannerism, their behavior, their conduct is children. You ever see children playing in the garden? They are always fighting all the time. Why? Because one has got a better toy than that other one, and the other one wants to bully this other one. The other one hates that other one, so on. That's how children are. You understand? There's always some confusion. Children, the whole day, that's what they do. They throw tantrums. Okay, read that again. Verse 15. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 15. My son, look not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot. From their path. He says, refrain your, he says what? Refrain thy foot from their path. Go back to Luke now, chapter 7, verse 31 again. Luke chapter 7, verse 31. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, Where unto then shall I liken the men of this generation? And to okay. what are they like? Come on. They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace. And calling one to another and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned to you, and ye have not wept. You see what he's saying? He says, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned to you, and ye have not wept. So, what is this going into? It goes in, it's going, it's peer, this peer pressure. You see, peer pressure is a what? It's a conspiracy of evil nicks. Yes. Peer pressure is a conspiracy of evil nicks. That's what, that's what peer pressure is. That's what we're explaining here. That's how the men of that generation moved. That's the, main, the same mindset of the men of that generation is the same mindset that we have today. That's why Christ was addressing it. Because the same generation back then is the same generation today and they are back. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. Okay? Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. The men of this generation, they are fueled by what? A lot of them, they are raised by their mothers. The men of this generation, they are raised by their mothers. You understand? So now when you bring correction, a lot of them, very emotional. You understand? But some, they hide it very well, by the way. You think you can't see it. They hide it very well. Okay? Watch this. Give me that in Isaiah 3 verse 12. Isaiah 3 verse 12. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. Mm -hmm. As for my people, children are the oppressors, and women rule over them. Read. O my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. You see that thing? It says children are their oppressors. Meaning what? Unruly teenagers. Unruly children that act like men. But they are not men, they are, they are children. That's why the classes is nappies and Bibles. 
Because when you have a, a children that has a nappy, that means somebody else has to change them. You understand? They mess up the nappy, it needs to be changed. You understand? So you just really look at that side. Look at a small baby holding a Bible with a what? No t-shirt, no, no top on, just walking around with a pampas. Just imagine that sight. Okay? Read that again. Verse 12. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 12. Read. As for my people, children are the oppressors, and women rule over them. Mm -hmm. O my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy path. So now, what we are, the characteristics of the men that Christ was talking about in Luke 7, that's the same, that's, these are the men that Christ is addressing here. You understand? Children are their oppressors because they oppress, they what? When, when go, oppression of the parents, it goes into what? It goes into disrespectful children. You understand? Disrespectful children. That's what it goes into. Children are their oppressors and women rule over them. Because a lot of them raised by their mothers. Even if the father is in the house, the mother is running the show. That's always the characteristics. So what you want to see is that a lot of the times, brothers come into the truth. You understand? This is um, part, part 2.1 of Sims that's coming. You understand? Brothers come into the truth. But what is happening is that you ever seen disrespectful teenagers that be throwing toys, punching their mothers? You understand? Destroying cups in the house and all of that. A lot of you, some of you, you are like that spiritually. You don't do it physically, but spiritually, that's how you are. And you hide it very well. You understand? And sisters, bread alert, okay? These are things you need to investigate when you are proving these simple names. You understand? Spiritually, they are, they are like teenagers, okay? They, are, they have rage. So now, because what? They've been raised by their mothers. Now you come into the camp, we talk to you like a man. You have, you, you, inside, you are, you are hot. You understand? Watuka, you are hot on the inside, but there's nothing you can do. You understand? Because the most I can put you to death. But guess what? You don't address it, but you fake the funk. Okay, read that again, verse 12. Come on. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. As for my people, children are the oppressors, and women rule over them. Mm -hmm. O my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. It says, they which lead thee, cause thee to err. You understand? To go off, to be emotional, to be feminine. You understand? To have rage. Okay? Well, you to work stubborn. You understand? Because that's what I'm picking up now. And I'm going to deal with you, brothers, one by one. Okay? Don't, them counsels are coming. Okay? It says, um, they which lead thee, cause thee to err and destroy the way of their path. You understand? Watch this. Kim, jump up to verse 5. Isaiah 3, verse 5. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 5. Mm -hmm. And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another. Read. And everyone by his neighbor. Come on. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient. Read that again. And the base, the child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient. It says the child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient. You understand? Because why? The children, they have no what? They have not been taught how to be men. And now when they come in Israel, when you are taught to be men, and when you are talked to like a man, guess what happens? That woman in you cannot take it. The woman in you is enraged. The woman in you, you wants to fight. The woman in you wants to cry. The woman in you wants to throw tantrums. You understand? And the way you throw them, you don't do them physically. You do it spiritually. You understand? Read that again. And the child shall what? Come on. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient. The child. The, so the child, hold on. The child will behave themselves proudly. Meaning what? They will go outside of the law that says, give me that in Exodus. You understand? Exodus. About honor your mother and your father. Give me that thing. Exodus 20 verse 12. Exodus chapter 20 verse 12. Come on. Honor thy father and thy mother. 
mm-hmm. that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. You see that thing? That's a heavy commandment right there. Honor thy father and thy mother. So that's a heavy commandment right there. But when it says, go back to Isaiah now, chapter 3, verse 5. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 5. Mm-hmm. And the people shall be oppressed, Come every on. one by another, and every one by his neighbor. Read. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient. Come on. And the base against the honorable. You see what he's saying? And the base against the honorable, with the honorable, because the mind is base. There's no wisdom in the mind. It's only what? Ten terms. So now it says the child will behave themselves proudly against the ancient. They will no longer honor the law that says, honor thy father and thy mother. Okay? It says, and the base against the honorable. Because the honorable is those that keep the commandments and move in the way of the Lord. So when you are taught God's commandments and you are corrected, you are guided on the way in which you should go according to the scriptures, guess what happens? When you are raised up by your mother, you are emotional, you are a woman on the inside, guess what? You're going to have what? You're going to be that, 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 that. You're going to be that quote-unquote man with a Bible. But guess what? The nappy that you are wearing will be seen by all. So this is what we're trying to avoid. Brothers come in, you understand? Some brothers have been raised up. And what I'm seeing is that Mm, I'll get to that. Give me a second. Give me, a, give me Sirach 30 verse 8. Watch this. Give me Sirach chapter 30 verse 8. Brothers have been raised up, okay? But here's what I'm picking up, okay? So this has to be dealt with um, on a thorough basis, all right? Watch this. Give me Sirach chapter 30 verse 8. We need to do some Ecclesiastes. There's a couple of reforms that needs to be done in the camp. Okay, just uh, be aware of it. It's coming. All right. Uh, Sirach chapter 30 verse 8. Read what you got. Ecclesiastes chapter 30 verse 8. Read. And who is not broken becometh headstrong. Read that again. And the child. Ecclesiastes chapter 30 verse 8. Mm-hmm. And who is not broken becometh headstrong. He says, a horse, a horse not broken becometh headstrong. Because when you get correct, when you are not used to being corrected, right? You're coming from your mother and your father in the world. You come into the truth. You're not used to being corrected. You understand? It says you become headstrong. When you come in Israel, you are what? You are surprised when you are corrected. Because the first thing that I'm picking up, I see brothers, when I talk to some of you brothers, is like you have that thing of saying, you're not my father. You're not going to tell me what to do. But you say you are an Israelite. You say you want to teach your people. You say you want to be part of God's government, but you still have that thing. You are not my parent. You understand? So I'm seeing that, and it will be addressed thoroughly. Okay, read that again, verse 8. Come on. Ecclesiastes 30, verse 8. And who is not broken becometh headstrong, and the child left to himself will be willful. You see that part right there? A child left to himself will be willful. That's why the instruction is always study, study. You understand? Study and apply the scriptures. That's why we make sure that you're not idle because idleness, give me that in Sirach, chapter 37, okay? Sirach 37, I mean Sirach 33, verse 27. Sirach 33, verse 27. Ecclesiastes, 33, verse 27. Read. Send him to labor. Uh-huh. That he be not idle. Right? For idleness teacheth much evil. You see that thing? For idleness teacheth much evil. Send him to labor that he be not idle because idleness teacheth much evil. So a lot of you, you come in, we give you things to do. You understand? And those things that you have been given to do, a lot of you, you are slaking in those things. Why? Because the task that you've been given, you don't think that a parent has given you the task because your parent is where you grew up. So when you come in Israel, you are given things to do, you are held accountable where we at with this. The way you respond, you don't really believe that the most like God is what he wants. I'm, you're not supposed to talk to me like that. Who are you? Who are you going to talk to me like that? My father in the world don't talk to me like that because your father didn't teach you right. 
your mother didn't teach you right. When you come in Israel, we will teach you according to the scriptures. And a lot of you, you don't like that. But yet you are still here. I don't get it. You understand? And so that has to be shut down quick. Because we have children in the camp. We have sisters in the camp. We have brothers that really want to do the work. But I'm seeing that there's awesome spirits that are hindering other spirits in the camp. And I'm going to shut that down. Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiasticus. Chapter, um, chapter 22, verse 10. Watch this. Sarah 22, verse 10. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 22, verse 10. Read. But children, being haughty. Mm -hmm. You see that part right there? This, it says, but children being haughty, meaning disrespectful. Come on. Through disdain and want of nurture, disdain the nobility of their kindred. You see that thing? It says what? Through disdain and want of nature, meaning lack. Lack of nature. Because the nature that we give you is what is written in the scriptures. We give you nature according to what is written. Not according to how we think, how we feel in our hearts. And we don't care what you think and how you feel in your heart. I don't really care what you think. I don't care what you think. How you feel. No. The Bible. What is written is what is going to be done here. As it is written. Anything outside of that is not going to work. Okay. So that's why it says, but children being haughty through disdain and want of nature do stain the nobility of their kindred. Meaning what? Your disrespectful and disdain spirit is going to stain the nobility of your kindred. Meaning those that want to get themselves right, you will stand in their way. Why? Because you don't want to receive the nature. Your job is to receive the nature. The medicine is being dished out on a daily basis. Every single day we have class. That's medication. Your job is to take the medicine. But a lot of you, you don't want to take the medication. You, are just, you just show up to class, you take notes, but you don't take the dose. You don't take the dose. You wonder why spiritually you're not growing. You wonder why spiritually you're not progressing. What's the problem? You are not applying. You are not taking the medication. Okay? Go back to where was that? Ecclesiasticus, chapter 30. Verse 8 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 30, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And who's not broken becometh headstrong. Mm -hmm. And the child left to himself will be willful. You see the thing? A child left to himself will be willful. Because guess what? Nobody can tell them what to do. You understand? Nobody can tell them what to do. Read on. Cocker thy child. And he shall make thee afraid. You see that thing? It says, play with your child. Play with him, and he will make thee afraid. Meaning what? Afraid to check him. Cock the child, meaning play with him. He's going to make you afraid to correct him. Read. Play with him, and he will bring thee to heaviness. You see that thing? He's going to stress you out. He's going to bring you to heaviness. You understand? Some of you up in here. Go ahead. Laugh not with him. Love not with yes. him. Because uh, hold on, love not, love not. Because a lot of the times, you brothers, you understand. Um, I would, uh, you know, I would, we would, we would say, we would joke with you. You understand? We would be laughing with you and all of that. A lot of you, you take that as license to do what? To think that now we are on the same level. You understand? A lot of you, you do that. Them days are over because I'm picking up that you are you take kindness for now is license for me to do whatever I want or to speak however I want. That's not going to happen because that's what I'm seeing now. And that has to stop. Okay? That's not going to happen. I want brothers and sisters that are out there that are sick, that come in, that will receive and take the medication because brothers in the congregation, they are serious. They want to take the medication as well. Because there's no need. What's the point? The medication is given out. We, we diagnose you. This is the problem you got. Fix this. Fix that. Fix this. But you don't do it. You know, and I'm talking to you men directly. Okay? Fix this, fix that, fix that. But you still don't do it. Okay? And guess what? The more you don't do it, guess what's going to happen? You're going to be frustrated. 
and you're going to start to blame the leadership. No, it's the leadership's fault. No, no, it's your fault. Our job is to teach you the laws of God. We apply it. We lead you by example, but you don't follow the example because your mind is the mind of a child. You have one toy in front of you. When the new toy comes in, you drop the toy, you focus on the new one. But you're not done on what, what you don't deal with what is what's in front of you. The mind is wandering all the time. The medication came in, the spirit, the spirit jumped up. The spirit jumped on us to do what? To push the truth out, to teach the class, a wandering mind. That, that scripture came out. Why? Because it's needed. Because brothers and sisters, their minds are wandering about. They are not focused. That's why that class came out. To help those brothers and sisters that their minds is always racing and all of that so that they can what? They can discipline their thoughts on what's in front of them. But that's not what's going on now. You understand? A lot of you think you deserve to be here. A lot of you think you deserve that the Lord called you in here. No, you must walk worthy of the, of the vocation where with you are called. You must show yourself worthy to the Most High. Not to me, to the Most High God, but you will follow command. Read that again, verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 30, verse 9. Read. Conquer thy child, and he shall make thee afraid. Mm -hmm. Play with him, and he will bring thee to heaviness. Read on, verse 10, come on. Laugh not with him. Mm -hmm. lest, thou, lest thou have sorrow with him, Great. and lest thou gnash thy teeth in the end. That's exactly what we are trying to avoid. So that what? You don't gnash, I don't want to gnash my teeth in the end. That's why now it's time to do what? To make sure that the laws of God are, are, are hammered over your head. But a lot of you, you don't download these laws into your spirit. You understand? Come on. Verse 11. Give him no liberty in his youth and wink not in at his follies. You see that thing? It says, give him no liberty in his youth and wink not at his follies. That's why when you go off, I'll tell you, bruh, you, you are the spirit. You must fix this. How come this thing is still going on? Why are you still struggling with this? How many counsels did you receive about X, Y, and Z? You don't still don't apply it because you are playing games. You understand? Come on. Bow down his neck while he is young. Stop right there. And he says, bow down his neck while he is young. Because when you come in, you understand? That's why Christ said, give me that in uh, Second Ezra. Because this is what Christ said. Second Ezra 14, 32. Second Ezra 14, verse 34. This is what Christ said. Watch this. Second Ezra 14, verse 34. Therefore, it shall be that ye will subdue your own understanding. And reform your hearts, ye shall be kept alive, and of the death ye shall obtain mercy. So it says, therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding and reform your hearts. You see that part right there? Subdue your own understanding, meaning be a child, spiritually. Be born again, spiritually. That's why it says, bow down his neck while he is young. Because this is going into a literal child, the, the, the small baby that are growing up, Guess what? You didn't grow there. None of you grew up in the laws. So now, spiritually, you need to be what? Your neck needs to be bowed down to what? To the laws of God. You must submit to what is written and change your thinking. Because the, the worst thing that you can be is be a novice that is what? That is what that is waxed stubborn. You understand? You are an amateur. You're just, you're still coming in. You understand? But you are still, you are, you are moving with the spirit of, I know already, don't nobody can tell me nothing. By that logic, by that conduct, by that thought process, you are done. You are a, you are a broken toy now. We, we mean a broken toy can be fixed. If you don't change that and get it together, guess what? You'll remain that broken toy. You understand? Come on. For after death, Shall the judgment come? When no, no. we shall... No, no, that's it on that. Go back to where he was at. Sirach 30, verse 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 30, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Bow down his neck while he is young. Read. And beat him on the sides while he is a child. Read. Lest, lest he work stubborn. You see that part right there? Lest he work stubborn. It says, and beat him on the sides while he is a child. 
right now we can lay hands on you you understand we can lay hands on you it is less he works stubborn but now guess what this is how we lay hands on you give me that in psalms 141 okay psalms 141 verse 5 this is how we lay hands on you this is beat him on the side we can't do that now because you understand? You are no longer three year old anymore. You are not three years or three year, three year olds anymore. Watch this. Give me Psalms 141 verse 5. Psalms 141 verse 5. Come on. Let the righteous smite me. Let the what? Let the righteous smite me. Let the righteous smite me. Go ahead, meaning beat me. That's what we are reading in Sarak. We can't physically do it. Now this is how we do it now. Go ahead. It shall be a kindness. It shall be and a what? It shall be a kindness. Because a lot of you, because you have worked stubborn, because you think you're on some level, you think you are somewhere already. And here's the problem. It says it shall be a kindness. When you are at that level, you're not going to see it as a kindness. You're going to see it as, no, I know. I know better. I know this. I'm grown and all of that. No, go, go to your death then. Okay? It says it shall be a kindness. The reason why scriptures come out, correction comes out, is what? That's kindness, to get your mind right. But the more you are corrected and you don't fix it, guess what happens to you? You work stubborn. You understand? You become stubborn to a point where when we talk to you, you don't even say nothing anymore. You just nod your head. So that's how you talk to your fathers now. I'm going to deal with you men. Them days are over. I'm going to deal with you men. Why? Because... I'm noticing that a lot of you, you are not here. And some of you, you are here and you think you deserve to be here. You, des you think you deserve that the Lord called you here. The Lord says, I will raise up stones in your place. All of us were unprofitable servants, but you are only as good as the last righteous act. Let me say that again. You are only as good as your last righteous act. Some of you, you playing games up in here. You understand? But a new sheriff in town, we're going to deal with things. Okay, read that again, verse 5. Psalms 141, verse 5. Read. Let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness, mm -hmm. and let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil. It shall be a what? Shall, it shall be an excellent oil. It shall be an excellent oil. That excellent oil is the laws of God. Come on. Which shall not break my head. It's not going to break your head. Read. For yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. So now, let's go back to where he was at now. So like 30 verse 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 30 verse 12. Mm -hmm. Bow down his neck while he is young. And beat him on the sides while he is a child. Read. Lest, lest he wax stubborn and be disobedient unto thee, and so bring sorrow to thine heart. You see what he's saying? It says, lest he, let, he said what? Lest he works stubborn. Because when you are waxing stubborn, that means what? You are, you are becoming more and more stubborn, to wax stubborn. You are waxing stubborn, meaning what? It's a what? It's a, it's, it's a geometric progression. You understand? You are becoming more and more stubborn. That means you are becoming more and more hardened mentally and spiritually you are becoming more and more hardened nothing these scriptures can't get to you the only one that they will get to you is the lord through death killing you that's the only way you understand it says you you lest you work stubborn and be disobedient unto thee and so bring sorrow to thine heart as for me and my house i'm not gonna allow that thing to go down you understand we're not gonna allow that thing we are not, 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 none of these things are going to be allowed here. Maybe some other camps, they will allow them. Not here. Because if we allow one to do it, and somebody else is going to do it as well, then the whole camp is out of order. That's not happening. We are not going to be the church of Corinth. Okay? Watch this. Read on, verse 13. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. Chastise thy son. Read. And hold him to labor. Come on. Just lest his lewd behavior be an offense unto thee. You see that thing? It says, chastise thy son. How do we chastise you? We correct you with the scriptures. You understand? 
Because a lot of you, you know what the sickness is. We, we've discovered your, the symptoms and the root cause. You've been given medication. What's left is you taking the medication. A lot of you, you don't want to take your medication. You understand? That's why it says, chastise thy son and hold him to labor, lest his lewd behavior be an offense unto thee. Because your lewd be your disrespectful behavior, guess what? It's going to be an offense unto us. And if we allow it to go down, that means, guess what we are doing? Now we are allowing evil to spring in the, in the camp. No, that's not happening. Watch this. Give me the book of Ephesians 6 and 1. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Watch this. Ephesians 6, verse 1. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Come on. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Mm -hmm. For this is right. Read. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. The first commandment with promise. What was the promise? The promise of life. That's what it says that your days may be long upon the earth. That's the promise. Go ahead. That it may be well with thee. And thou may and thou mayest live long on the earth. Thou mayest live long upon the earth. Watch the next part. Verse 4 is the key. We want to get to this verse right here. We what you got? Verse 4. And ye fathers provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Because this scripture right here is butchered in the Christian church. They 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 the way they, ex they, they explain the scripture is that he says, don't provoke your children to wrath. Meaning what? Don't, don't be too hard on your children. That's, what they, that's how they explain it in the church. Because when you're too hard on them, they become what? They, become, they back up. You understand? They don't want to do it. So you must say, come little baby, little baby. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. That's not what the scripture is saying. Read it again. Verse 4. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4. Come on. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, Read. but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You see the key, says, provoke not your children to wrath. Then it says, but bring them up in the nature. The nature is the Bible. And admonition of the Lord. What is the admonition of the Lord? The scriptures. Meaning what? Correct them. That's why I said, beat him on the side. If they are still young, beat him on the side. If they are older, Smack him on the head with the laws of God. That's how you do it. You understand? Watch this. We coming back here. Give me Colossians 3 verse 20. Colossians chapter 3 verse 20. Watch this. Colossians chapter 3 verse 20. Mm -hmm. Children, obey your parents in all things. Read. For this is well pleasing unto the Lord. You see that thing? Children, obey your parents in all things. For this is well pleasing unto the Lord. Watch this. Come on, verse 21. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. You see that thing? It says, provoke not your children to anger. Now, let's explain what this means now. Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah. Okay? Give me Isaiah 51, verse 20. Isaiah, let me show you when it says, um, when it says, provoke not your children to anger. And then in Ephesians says, Provoke not your children to wrath. What is this talking about? What wrath is he making reference to? Because remember, go back to Ephesians 4, 6 verse 4. So we don't lose the thought. Ephesians 6 and 4. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4. Come on. And he fought this. Provoke mm -hmm. not your children to wrath. Read. But bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So the provoke not your children to wrath means what? The in for you not to provoke your children to wrath, you must admonish them. We must, you must bring them up in the nature and admonition of the Lord. So the best, the way to provoke not your children to wrath, this is what it means not to provoke your children to wrath. Let's understand what the wrath is talking about. But first, watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah 51 verse 20. Isaiah chapter 51 verse 20. Okay. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 20. Read. Thy sons have fainted. Thy sons have fainted. Thy sons have fainted. Come on. They lie at the head of all the streets 
they as a lie, wild bull. Hold on. They lie at the head of all the streets. Thy sons have fainted. They've fainted from who they are. They've fainted from the laws of the Most High God. They are unconscious. You understand? They lie at the head of all the streets. The street corners. Come on. Go ahead. As a wild bull in a net. As a what? As a wild bull in a net. As a wild bull in a net. Meaning they are out of control. Disrespectful. Go ahead. They are full of the fury of the Lord. They are what? They are full of the fury of the Lord. They are full of the fury of the Lord. The rebuke of thy God. So when it says provoke not your children to wrath, it's talking about the wrath of the Most High God on them. Don't provoke them to what? To the wrath of the Lord. Because how do you not provoke them? You must admonish them in the word of God. With the word of the Most High God. Because if you don't, you will provoke them what? To the wrath of the Lord. The wrath of the Lord will be upon them. And that's what we are reading here. When it says, uh, they are, it's a wild bull in the net. They are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of their God. Because why? They have, they have what? They have been provoked to wrath, to the wrath of the Most High God. Why? Because they are disrespectful. They are out of control. Let me show you the example of the wrath of the Lord upon the disrespect children that are disrespectful. Watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 21 verse 18. Deuteronomy 21 verse 18. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 21 verse 18. Read. Right? If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, mm -hmm. which if, will if a man, not obey on. the voice. Come on. He says, if a man have a stubborn and rebellious son. So that's the subject matter. Stubborn and rebellious. Go ahead. Which will not obey the voice of his father. Come on. Or the voice of his mother. Uh -huh. And that when they have chast chastened him, will not hearken unto them. You, you see that thing? It says, when they have chastened him, will not hearken unto them. Meaning what? He's disrespectful. Because when he says will not hearken, that means what? He's going back and forth with the parents. You understand? They say they say one thing, he says something different. They say, and I see some, I see some of you. Actually, you do it. Them days are, are over. I'm coming for you. Understand that? I need to make sure that the brothers that are coming in, they understand how things, how to be a man, how to learn etiquette, how to address the elders and all of that. All of that needs to happen. That needs to go. That needs to go down. And it will be implemented by force. Understand that. Read on. Verse 19. Then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and bring him out unto the elders of, this, of his city. Right. And unto the gate of this place. Because he said that, you see, when because he does not want to listen to his father, meaning what? His father and mother, they tried. Now he's what? They, they are not winning. So now they say, okay, you don't want that. That's fine. Now he says they will bring him to the elders of his city and unto the gates of his place. You see that thing right there? The elders of the city and unto the gate of his place. Meaning what? The house. So they're going to bring you to the elders of the city. They will take you and bring you to your gate, the gate of your father, your father's house. Okay, come on. Watch this. And they shall say unto the elders of the city, This our son is stubborn and rebellious. Read. He will not obey our voice. Come on. He is a glutton and a drunkard. Meaning what he eats, he sleeps, he poops. That's what he does. He says he will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. Watch this. Come on. And all the men of his city shall stone him with stones. That Come he on. die. So that thou, Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 21, and all the men of his city shall stone him with stones, that he die. So shalt thou put evil away from among you, and all Israel shall hear and fear. You see what he's saying? He says, and all the men of his city shall stone him with stone that he dies. Where are they doing this? At the gate of his house. They are killing him at the gate of his father and mother. You understand? At the gate of his house, it says, so shall thou put evil away from among you, and all Israel 
shall hear, shall hear and fear. Meaning what? This is how they put the evil out of the city. Because they understood that if we let this evil to go down, it's going to what? It's going to spread through the whole community and the whole nation will be in shambles. Because of what? Because of this disrespectful Negro right here. So all Israel understood that. And they all did it with what? They did it with joy and might. Why? Because they understood that if we don't do this, guess what? The evil is going to spread. Because if you get away with it next door, the next door, the, the child next door also is going to do it. Before you know it, the whole community is in a mess. Why? Because of that one child. So now he says, because of that, guess what? He needs to be put to death so that all Israel may hear and fear. Don't follow that example. That's how we dealt with things in Israel. Today, the Lord does that. Okay, come on. And if no, a man have that. come... That, no, no. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it on that. That's it on that. So, give me Proverbs 29 verse 1. Proverbs 29 verse 1. Read. He that being often reproved, hardeneth his neck, and shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. Read that again. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 1. Mm -hmm. He that being often reproved, hardeneth his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed. So and it says he, hold on, it says he that being often reproved, hardeneth his neck. Why is he hardening his neck? Because he's corrected all, he's corrected often, but he's hardening his neck. Why is he hardening his neck? Because it doesn't apply. Instead of applying, Isaiah 3 verse 12 kicks in. You see that thing? Instead of applying, Isaiah 3 verse 12 kicks in. And guess what? The nig kicks in. Because you're not my daddy. You understand? Now, if a sister is in, is a sister in the congregation, correct another a daughter. No, you're not my mother. You see, that's the mindset of a nig. Nigs, things like, think like that. You understand? Watch this. Read that again, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 1. Mm -hmm. He that being often reproved, hardeneth his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 1. He that being often reproved, hardeneth his neck, shall mm -hmm. suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. So now, so King Solomon is explaining here, because remember, King Solomon is also explaining the things that he was doing, because he was often reproved. He was being reproved over and over of the evils that he was doing, but he wasn't listening. You understand? It says, he that being often reproved, hardeneth his neck. Because the reproof is to do what? It's not going to break your head. It's an excellent oil which shall not break your head. That's why it says, let the righteous smite me, and it shall be what? It shall be a kindness. Because that's a kindness. Why? Because we don't want the fury of the Lord to come upon you. That's why it says, children, do not, fathers, don't provoke your children to wrath, to anger. What is the anger to The anger of the Lord upon you. We are preventing that. That's why correction comes out. So, but when you are reproved often and you don't apply, you're going to harden your neck. That's what the Lord is saying. And shall suddenly be destroyed. You are going to be destroyed suddenly. Because back then you knew what was coming. Back then you knew that they were going to bring you to the elders of the city. And they will bring you to the gate of your father and mother's house. And they will stone you right there and put you to death. You knew what was coming. Now you don't know what's coming. And when it's coming. That's why it says suddenly you shall suddenly be destroyed. And that without remedy. Now you are that broken toy. Don't nobody can fix. You understand? Jump down to verse 19. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 19. Read. A servant will not be corrupted by words. For though he understand, he will not answer. Read that again. Read that again. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 19. Mm -hmm. A servant will not be corrected by words. Read. For though he understand, he will not answer. You see that thing? It says a seven will not be corrected by words. Meaning what? Be this talking about what? He's talking about that seven that is often reproved because what? He is waxing stubborn. 
He's waxing stubborn. He's just advancing in his stubbornness, in his rebellion. You understand? It says, a servant will not be corrected by words. For though he understand, he will not answer. He understand what's coming out. Don't get it twisted. He, not that he don't understand. He understands what's coming out. The problem is that he will not answer because of what? Pride. One. Two, it says, also, he's not going to verbalize what is going on in the mind. He's not going to verbalize. He will internalize it. You understand? Why? Because Isaiah 3 verse 12 kicks in. They which lead thee cause thee to err. Because now you are a monster. But your, your, your monstrosity is spiritual. It's in the spirit. So instead of you be punching people in the face, instead of you... Um, you pushing people around and all of that. No, no, no. The way you, you do it in the spirit, meaning what? You've in, you, you took it, you are internalizing it. Because, yeah, I don't, I don't want a brother so-and-so to think of me like this, such and such. But we can see, I can see it. You understand? I can see it. I look at you, I see that brother right there, he's waxing stubborn. And it doesn't matter how many scriptures are coming out. He's still, he's, he's, he's made it in his mind. So I'm not going to change nothing. You're not going to tell me nothing. I'm not going to apply what you say. Am I saying, did I write this book? No, I didn't write this book. But it, it is your cuckoo for Cocoa Pops because think about it. You here, you want to hear the word of God, right? You want to change your life. But the people that the law that which you believe in, as you claim, you believe in, they are giving you correction in the spirit of his son, the Christ. Guess what? In your spirit, you say, you're not going to tell me what to do. I don't have to listen to you, but yet you are still sitting in class listening. What is that called? Madness. What is that called? Delusion. Who, who's doing that? The Lord is doing this. Watch this. Give me that in uh, 2 Thessalonians real quick. Okay. 2 Thessalonians 2. Let's start at verse 10. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. Read. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Come on. Because they receive not the love of the truth. Uh -huh. That they might be saved. Because the, 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 the whole point of them waxing stubborn is because you don't receive the love of the truth. You don't receive the love of the truth. The laws of God cannot be planted in you. Yes, he says, though he understand, he will not answer. That's what, that's the example here. You understand? Because you don't want to receive the love of the truth that you might be saved, delivered from that demon that is ruling over you. That demon that you are worshipping, Satan, that's over your head. Come on. And for this cause, God shall, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That's the key right there. God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie. So you are sitting here you taking notes every day when we have we, classes are coming out. Medication. You understand? Take medication on a daily basis so you can get better. A lot of you, you don't do it. You understand? So now, at the same time, when you get corrected or classic coming out, you, everything is personal with you. You take everything personal. And a lot of you, um, it shows through your countenance, your mannerism. I can tell you don't really what's, like what's coming out. And you, you are personalizing everything that's coming out and you are holding a grudge towards leadership because the scriptures, we bring the scriptures out. I'm bringing the scriptures out as it is written, but you have misdirected anger. So you internalize it. And then you're going to be talking about, no, I like that sister. No, I, 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 one day I'm, when, I, when I get married, listen, you mean to tell me, I can see you don't want to get yourself right. You are internalizing Everything that's coming out, is you're taking it personal. You are taking it in. You don't do nothing about it. And I'm going to give it to that sister. You're crazy. You're going to kill that, that sister. Because you are an abuser. You are a ticking time bomb. You are a powder cake. Once you get married, all that rage will be what? Will be dished out to that sister. And now that sister is destroyed. And guess who they're going to blame? They say, SOC teaches that. No, we don't teach that garbage. You understand? We don't teach garbage like that. But my point is, the Knicks, they don't take a responsibility for nothing. But they internalize the stuff. 
That's why it says, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. You're going to create a lie in your head, you'll believe it. You understand? Because you'll be sitting, taking notes, but hating the scriptures coming out and the man the Lord has set up to give you, to guide you and teach you because you don't think that's the man of the Lord, but yet you say you believe in the Lord. What is that called? Strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Now the most High God now has allowed Satan to take the seat. Satan now is in the driver's seat. Not Jesus take the wheel. Mm -mm. Satan take the wheel. Satan will be there, I got it from here. That's what's going to happen. Next, next verse, come on. Verse 12. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You see that thing, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Had pleasure in sin. Stop, because you are waxing stubborn. You understand? Don't nobody can get to you. Watch this. Somebody can get to you. Second Ezra chapter 16. Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 16 and verse, verse 77. Second Ezra chapter 16. You know what? Start at verse 76. 16 verse 76. Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 16 verse 76. And the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord God, let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. You see what? This is a commandment. You understand? And the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, because you are guided to do what? To keep the commandments and the precepts of the Most High, apply them, saith the Lord God. Let not your sins weigh you down. Don't let the breaking of God's laws destroy you. You understand? Because you're waxing stubborn. Because don't nobody can tell you nothing. Because you're not your, you're not my you're not my father. You're not gonna tell me that, okay? So it says, let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. How do they lift up themselves? Now, your anger, your rage, you understand? Your dislike for leadership and the scriptures coming out is now running ruling over you what is that called emotions you understand read on verse 77 watch this woe be unto them that are bound with their sins that's it right there but woe be unto them that are bound with their sins because who decides who de who, who's, who, whose decision is it for you to be bound with your sins you decide it's your decision for you to be bound with your sins. Hold this. Give me, give me Matthew 18. Matthew 18 verse 18. Watch this. Matthew chapter 18 verse 18. Because another thing that we don't seem to understand is that. Um, read the verse. Read it. And I'll explain it. Matthew chapter 18 verse 18. Read. Verily I say unto you. Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth. Shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. That's it right there. Simple. Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So if you, correction comes up, you don't receive the correction. Instead, you become offended. You become a woman. You become emotional. You hold a grudge. You start to have an evil eye towards leadership. Because I pick it up, I just keep quiet and say, I hope the brother can get himself right. I hope the brother can what? Can swallow his pride. I hope the brother, I pray that the brother can get it together and realize that we are not here to raise up, uh, to raise up women in the sense that men, we are here to build men up because men are the leaders of the nation. We're not going to talk to you like, a, like, a, like, 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 like I talk to the sister. No, I'm going to talk to you like I talk to a man or I'm going to talk to you I'm going to talk to you the way in which you must grow up to become a man. That's how I'm going to talk to you. But a lot of you, you don't like that because it hits home because you're not used to that. You understand? Read that, read that part again. Verse 18. Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Mm -hmm. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. You see that part right there? So now go back to where was that now? So whatever you whatever you whatever you lose here, you lose or you whatever you bind here on earth, 
is bound in heaven already. Who's doing that? You are doing it. You understand? And whatsoever you shall lose on earth, also in the heavens, the Lord shall say, okay, I'll release it then. But as long as you, the scriptures come out, you're moving in the, you're, 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 work, you're waxing stubborn. You understand? Don't nobody can tell you nothing. Guess what? You are binding it here on earth. Guess where it's bound as well? It's bound up there in the heavens. You understand? Go back to 2nd Ezra, chapter 16, verse 77. Watch this. 2nd Ezra, chapter 16, verse 77. Mm -hmm. Who will be unto them that are bound with their sins? That are what? That are bound with their sins. That are bound with their sins. Come on. And covered with their iniquities. And covered with their what? And covered with their iniquities. You see what he's saying? He says, Woe unto them that are bound with their sins and covered with their iniquities. So you are bound with your sins because what did you do? You decided to bind them here on earth. Guess where they are bound as well? They are bound up there in the heavens. So you you are the ones, you, you destroying your own self. Because the Bible, the scriptures, are the, the, the scriptures, they are too high for you. Your mind is operating on another level above the Bible. So it says, woe be unto them, meaning death be unto them that are bound with their sins, meaning they don't want to repent. You understand? And covered with their iniquities. Like as a field, go ahead, like as a what? Like as a field is covered over with bushes and the path thereof covered with thorns mm -hmm. that no man may travel through. You see that part right there? That no man may travel through. Meaning we can't get to you. It doesn't matter how many counsels we give you. You know, there's no, it doesn't matter how many counsels I can have with you. It doesn't matter how many scriptures I can give you because there's no magic scripture. It doesn't matter how many classes can come out. If you have bound that thing on here on earth, you don't want to let it go. You don't want to repent of it. It's bound in heaven as well. That no man may travel through. The leadership, I can't get to you. Guess who's going to get to you? The Lord will do that. The most High God will get to you. And you're not going to like that. Watch this. Give me that in 2nd Ezra 16, same chapter. 2nd Ezra chapter 16, verse 53. Yes, sir. 2nd Ezra chapter 16, verse 53. Mm -hmm. Let not the sinner say that he hath not sinned. For God shall burn coals of fire upon his head. Mm. which saith before the Lord God and his glory, I have not sinned. Because when the, when the correction comes out, many of you have a lot of excuses. You understand? And you see, you, know, you see what you are saying? Which said before the Lord God and his glory, I have not sinned. That's what you are saying. You don't want to acknowledge that that's me right there. Just let me fix myself. You don't want to. Because you acknowledging it means you have to do what? Now you, you realizing that I'm like this. Yes, you are like this. So, but there's an opportunity to fix it. But a lot of you, you don't want to do it. You understand? So now you become what? You become that baby with a nappy. You understand? Holding a Bible in your hand. Who are you going to teach like that? Who are you going to build like that? Who are you going to correct? Who are you going to raise up like that? I mean, really just look at the sight. That's why Christ said, what shall I liken the men of this generation? And to what are they like? They are like unto children, kids. You understand? Kids. That's what Christ was saying. That's what Christ was bringing out. But a lot of you want to be stuck on stupid. A lot of you are just stuck on stupid. I tell you straight. A lot of you, you are stuck on stupid. Why? Because the scriptures come out, you don't want to apply. You are stuck on stupid. Yeah. Because it doesn't matter how many times I can sit with you. You are just waxing stubborn. You don't want to listen. And you agree, but you don't do it because you, try, you think you are fooling me. No, you're not fooling me. You're fooling yourself. And when you fail, you're going to blame the leadership. Because you didn't apply. You can make this stuff up. Read that again, verse 77. No, no, verse 53, I'm sorry. Verse 53. 
Sikhanizer chapter 16, verse 53. Mm -hmm. Let not the sinner say that he hath not sinned. For God shall burn coals of fire upon his head, which saith before the Lord God in his glory, I have not sinned. Come on. Behold, the Lord knoweth all the works of men, their imaginations, their thoughts, and their hearts. You see that thing? The most said God, he knows all the works of men. Their imaginations, their thoughts, and their hearts too. The Most High knows all of that. But a lot of us, we think we can fool the Lord. We, you, know, you understand? We can, just, we can just wiggle our way through it. No, that's not how it works. You cannot fake it until you make it. That's not how this works. In this truth, you can't fake it till you make it. That's not how this works. You're not going to make it like that. You have to keep it 100 from the jump. You understand? Watch this. Um, go back to Sirach, uh, I mean, it is, uh, Second Ezra 16. Read verse 77 again for me. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 77. Mm -hmm. All be unto them that are bound with their sins and covered with their iniquities, like as a field is covered, is covered over with bushes, and the path thereof covered with, with thorns that no man may travel through. Meaning your sins, you are so deep in your sins, right? No man, nobody can get to you. It doesn't matter how many classes can come out. None of those classes get to you. Okay, read on, verse 78. It is left undressed and is cast into the fire to be consumed therewith. You see that thing? So if it says it is left undressed, because guess what? It's undressed, naked, in the midst of sin. That's what he's talking about. It's left undressed, meaning what? It's not being corrected. You are not, you are not working on yourself to get it to get rid of it. And it's cast, excuse me, it's cast into the fire to be consumed therewith, meaning you're gonna die in those sins if you don't repent off of them. You understand? So now, because today is the is the is the new moon, okay, is the new moon celebration. All praise to the Most High is the beginning of the month. Okay. Today is the beginning of the month. All right. Watch this. Mm. I'm going to touch on that just for a second. The first book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop, that means a high-ranking leader, okay? A high-ranking captain, that's what that means. This, it says, this is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. Go ahead. A bishop then must be blameless. A bishop then must be blameless, meaning what? Must not be breaking God's commandments. Go ahead. The husband of one wife. The husband of one wife, because we don't teach multiple wives here. Go ahead. Vigilant. You must be vigilant. You must be on a let. Okay, come on. Sober. Sober-minded. The way you think, your thought process must be sober. Read. Of good behavior. Of good behavior. Read. Given to hospitality. Be given to hospitality, meaning what? You seek counsel. You receive the counsel. Come on. Apt to teach meaning have the aptitude to teach the nation of Islam, okay? So you brothers that want to be leaders in Israel, this is the job. This is the, this is the requirements, what we are reading here. Go ahead. Not given to wine. No striker. He says not, not given to wine. Not given to wine. It doesn't mean you don't drink. No, no. Meaning what? Don't be a drunkard. Okay, no striker be punching people in the face. Go ahead. Not greedy or filthy luck. Uh, lucre, lucre. Not greedy or filthy lucre, meaning what? They are covetous. They are about the money. Okay, come on. Not greedy or filthy lucre, but patient. But Not patient, you must, hold on. But patient, you must, that's the fruit of the spirit, long suffering. Come on. Not a brawler. Not a brawler, not a fighter. Read. Not covetous. Not covetous. Read on. 
one that ruleth well his own house. Stop right there. Read that part again. One that ruleth well his own house. It says, one that ruleth well his own house. So give me that in 2nd Ezra 14, verse 13. 2nd Ezra chapter 14, verse 13. Watch this. Second book of Ezra, chapter 14, verse 13. Now, therefore, set thine house in order and reprove thy people. Comfort such of them as be in trouble and now renounce corruption. He says, now, therefore, set thine house in order. That's the same thing that the apostle Paul is saying to Timothy here. Go back to where he was at, Second Timothy 3. No, First Timothy 3 and verse 4. First book of Timothy chapter 3, verse 4. One that ruleth well his own house, mm -hmm. having his children in subjection with all gravity. You see that thing? One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. You brothers, you need to understand something, okay? When you come here, you are here to learn. You are here to learn be quiet, okay, and absorb, download all the stuff that is coming out during this, these classes. Because if you don't, guess what's going to happen? You're going to end up being like uh, the children of the, 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 those sons of Eli. That was wicked as hell. Okay? But if you desire... To be a leader in Israel, this is exactly what you need to be. It says, one that ruleth well his own house. When you, when you brothers came here, the house is in order. But guess what? There are some of you who don't like that. You understand? Some of you don't like that. You don't like when there's order. Because a lot of the times I hear brothers when they are talking, 99% of the time is not scripture. It's the things going on in the world. You understand? Because you don't understand the importance of doing this work. Your conversation must be about this. Because a lot of you don't believe that 100% of the conversation can be about the scripts. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. Our forefathers did it. You understand? Watch this. Because the Apostle Paul addressed the same thing. First Corinthians chapter, let's start at verse one. First Corinthians two, verse one. Watch this. First book of Corinthians, chapter two, verse one. Read. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with the excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. He says, I came unto you declaring the testimony of God. I didn't come to you with excellency of speech or of wisdom of man. No, no. But declaring unto you the testimony of God. Come on. Verse 2. Watch this. For I determined not to know anything among you. Stop right Save there. What did he, hold on. What did he say? For I determined not to know anything among you. Read. Save Jesus Christ. And him crucified. You see what the Apostle Paul is saying? He says, for I determine not to hear anything among you say except Jesus Christ and him crucified. He says, that's all I want to know. I don't care about anything else outside of this book. He says, I don't give a damn. That's what the Apostle, that's the spirit of the Apostle Paul. Christ was just like that. And guess that's why it says, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Because that's what I'm, when I'm picking up when I hear brothers talk, a lot of the time it's not about the scripts. You understand? That's why it's so easy for brothers when you're among yourselves, you cannot correct one another according to the scriptures because 90%, 99.9% of the conversation is not scriptural. That's why it's so easy for you to be out the spirit when you're amongst yourselves. But you brothers, you forgot why you're here. This is an army, okay? 
And you, the soldiers, you soldiers, you are moving with the spirit of Rehoboam. I'm going to tell you straight. You are moving with the spirit of Rehoboam because Rehoboam's problem was what? Rehoboam always wanted to appease his friends. That was the problem with Rehoboam. The foolishness of the people Rehoboam was called because he, didn't, he was not about the nation. He was about his friends. No, we're here to hang out. You understand? And I'm seeing soldiers, you are moving in that spirit. No, we're just here to hang out. You see, we just have laughs. We have a couple of laughs. We go to camp. And then, like, you don't really see the war that you are in because you don't study. You don't apply. You understand? You think you are somewhere when you are not. Brothers, that spirit right there, that spirit of Rehoboam, that spirit of Rehoboam is going to get you killed in this truth. You understand? Read that again, verse 2. First book of Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 2. Mm -hmm. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. You see that thing? For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's the key. That's the point right there. Because what I'm seeing is that if Whenever you brothers, you are by yourselves, it's very easy. You just talk about whatever. When I'm around, you mind your tongue. Well, that's dangerous. Because that means when it's time for us to say, brother, so-and-so, I need you at that corner. That means you're not ready. You're not ready. As we are building, you're going to be plucking down like that foolish woman in Proverbs 14 and 1. We need to go two by two at every corner. You think that's going to be done with you brothers that are moving like this in the spirit of Rayo Bomb? That's not going to get done like that. So I need you men to really examine the realities of your situation here. Why? Because we have a war. We are at war. Our people, they desperate in need of this truth. Okay? They are, in desperate, they are in desperate need of this truth. So we need to definitely deal with that. Okay? But um, what I'm going to do though, I want the sisters to, the sisters are going to, you know, I want the, the sister, they can, they can talk about the stuff that they're going to be doing on the website. But I wanted to have this class because um, it's the new moon and we must have classes. We must have a class we must congregate, we must come together in the spirit of Christ to do what? To observe the new moon and bring out things that will set us in the right spirit. Because guess what? We are at war. We are soldiers. We are soldiers of Christ. And a soldier, the one thing that is in the mind of a soldier is what? The mission. Some of you have forgotten the mission now. Okay? So, um, where was we at? Go back to First Timothy 3 before I lose my thought. First Timothy 3 and verse, verse 4. First book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 4. Three. One that ruleth well his own house. Mm -hmm having his children in subjection with all gravity. And this is going to be done because I see some brothers are slaking on this. Them days are over. Go ahead. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Come on, watch this. Verse six is what I really want to get to. Not a novice. Stop right there. Read that again. First book of Timothy chapter three, verse six. Not a novice not a novice. What I'm noticing is that some of you brothers have been raised up, okay? Soldier Hegai has been raised as he's a soldier now, okay? Soldier Jonah has been reinstated, he's a soldier, okay? Um, the brothers are not soldiers yet, okay? But they are putting their brick in, all praise to the Mosai. Um, But what I am picking up is these are things that we'll discuss when the sisters are not here. Read that again, verse 6. First book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 6. Not mm -hmm. a novice. Lest being lifted up with pride, 
he fall into the condemnation of the devil. This is the point. You see this, this part right there? It says, less being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. You see this part right here? Not a novice. A lot, of, a lot of the times, you brothers, you are promoted to a soldier. It, it doesn't mean you are on that level. No, no, you have the potential to be on that level, hence the promotion. So while you are at that level, guess what you must do? Now you must, you must prove yourself on that level, that that level, you, you deserve to be on that level at that point. You understand? But a lot, but what I'm picking up is that brothers, you want to, you want to, you, you, you get a promotion. When you get that, that, that promotion, you know, you become what? Complacent at that, at that position. Now you are kick, you are, you decide you're kicking back. Now it's relaxation time. No, now it's war time. Now it's time for even, you know, for you to know, to, to, to dig into this Bible to understand how to build your spirit up. And you're going to be seeking even more counsel to do what? To understand what your role is and how you must do it. But if you don't study, how are you going to know? Because I can tell who's studying. I can tell who's studying. By the question you ask me, I can see this one is studying. This one is just reading. This one is just doing it just for the sake of. I can tell. But it's time to iron those issues out, okay? It's a new day. All praise to the Most High for that thing. All right. Um, I'm going to end the class right here. All praise to the Most High. Um, so, brothers and sisters, the sisters, um, you have the work that you need to do regarding the website and all of that stuff. Um, you can continue to do that because it's not save our work. You are doing the work of the most high, so that's fine. You can, you can, you can finish what you've been doing uh, in the spirit of Christ. All right. Um, the brothers, I need the brothers to stay online. Okay. Uh, but before we do that, let's break bread. First Corinthians 11, verse 23, in the honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. First book of Corinthians, chapter 11. Verses 23. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and say, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let the man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.